everybody. I'm Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Welcome to an awesome episode of Bio Buzz Weekly. Chuck, we are going to have so much fun. Beyond fun. Yes. We have Eric Bauza on the show today. You guys have been asking for him, and we got him here today. Yes. Right? Absolutely. He is so talented. He's on so many great shows that you love. And we're going to talk to him right this minute. Guys, if you've ever heard of Belly Bag, Foop, or Badoos, then you know our guest. He is taking the animation world by storm in shows like Uncle Grandpa, Breadwinners, Turbo Fast, and Fairly Odd Parents. He is an Annie nominated actor, and he is the Canadian super talent, Eric Bowser. Oh, hi. The Bowser! <laughs> and he Rebus. travels with his own paparazzi. Are you talking about me? I was posing. For Everywhere he goes, he has to have people take pictures of him <laughs> so it's yeah. a because it, it makes him feel really <laughs> it's a Hi, disease. Hi, Hi. How are, How are you? you? Good to see you. I'm glad How we finally got this to work out. You and I have been going yes. back and forth on yes. the, that fabulous Twitter. And I traveled all the way from Magnolia <laughs> and Kester. <laughs> the heart of the valley here. Yes, yes. We are deep in the valley. You get oh, your, my goodness. You get your smug check. You get yes. your uh, taxes done there. Yes. Hey. Uh, there's the Eagle Market. <laughs> I'm yes. plugging Eagle Market. Burritos. You can Burritos. Do jury Burritos. Duty. Yes. You do jury duty. Yeah. I could tell you what the gas prices are at Valero with my, <laughs> Valero! my, my binoculars from my balcony. <laughs> oh, my goodness Well, gracious. I'm glad to see you're not too busy to yes. lose your binocular time because it's important. That's that's good. <laughs> that's good to that medication. Is, yeah, I know. <laughs> Man, I, first of all, I got to start off by telling you that you have... So many people love you. It's not oh, even yes. funny. Like, literally, like I'm talking to my buddy Mike the other day. He's like, oh my God, guess who I just saw on the street? I go, Mike Eric. Brang, and he's like, yeah, yes. Mike Brang, this guy. Oh, so you, yeah. got, you took a picture yes. with him and he put it all over the he internet. He was so excited. What was cool, though, is that he was working too, though. It's not like, you know, I yeah. think that's, that's the thing about our career is that it's an industry made up of fans of everyone else. Like yeah. we were talking earlier about uh, Jess Harnell, yeah. who pretty much is the reason why I'm sitting here with you guys. And um, he, if we didn't know Jess, he wouldn't come over. That's the whole thing. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Otherwise, I'd just be on the street. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sweet butter cafe still yeah, open. Yeah. <laughs> you guys close early. Yeah. But uh, Jess uh, and Rob and Tress, uh, of course, from Animaniacs. I've been. I grew up watching them, mm -hmm. and I always tell. Uh, people like that, folks in that generation of voiceover, that I owe them babysitting money because they raised yeah. me as a child. Wow. And it makes them feel really old. So I'm sorry. Yeah. So yeah. you changed your tagline just a little bit. Yeah, he changes yeah. his tagline <laughs> you, now. I'm so inspired it's by no you. longer babysitting money. Now it's just uh, co -working. schooling. Yeah, at, yes. Uh, at Comic-Con, yeah. I, I, I had mentioned that. I feel like I'm getting paid to go to school. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. these guys and, and gals have been working behind the scenes and, and doing these voices for decades now. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, how many shows, how many shows have they been on that they've been able to reinvent yeah. who they are? Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's kind of like uh, the special part about our career is that you don't have to just yeah. be one person. You Absolutely. Could be, right. You could be this right. talking Absolutely. chair yeah, or, yeah. or, yeah. or well, a car. Well, and you can you can play, you know, you can be a 12 year old, a two year old, an yeah. 80 year old, and yeah. it doesn't matter. So yeah. it's one, it doesn't matter how you look or exactly. how old you are. Yeah. And, yeah. and speaking Except of. Except for today, because I got to make sure that yeah. I look Except good. for today. When you're sitting next to these two. Clean up your yeah. back. Uh, so we were at home saying, well, what should we wear today? And we're like, well, what would Eric wear? So we went on YouTube to find out how what he would wear. And it's like, he's like on shorts and slippers and cursing all over the stages of yeah. the world. You guys went to Build-A-Bear so, just so to we see what I, what I wear. We almost came in <laughs> naked for you, <laughs> yeah. but we decided against it. But well, no, we still have time. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, dude, because um, uh, you started out as a character designer, a production designer or yeah, whatever, uh, for, here in Hollywood? Even, even more so, a production assistant. I was doing photocopies. I was almost like an Italian intern. Uh, pretty much. Wow. That's that's the that's the very beginning of production. Mm. Right. Italiano interne. Italiano interne. Yeah. 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 So I had photocopies, tacking up storyboards and stuff. And then um and then it moved on from there to like editing animatics. I was an editor, I was doing sound effects editing for studios. And then um through making friends in, in that uh, arena like all the friends that I still have now, they're all making the shows now. Yeah. People that are working on shows like Teen Titans Go with uh, Tara Strong and company and um, uh, just people at Nickelodeon and Disney, they all started making their own shows and then they asked me to start auditioning for some of those pilots. Yeah. Wow. And um, I've I've just been lucky. I've did been they so know? Had you aspired to be a voice talent? I mean, obviously you grew up watching, 
But yes. did you say, like, I, when you came to Los Angeles, because you're from Toronto. Yes, I'm originally from Canada. So, so if you smell. Do you okay, know how you, <laughs> hey, do you drink any Moosehead beers, eh? Uh, right now, actually. Okay, this okay. Is, uh, cool. This is the stuff um, right They here. know you're here, right? This Canada Rick, knows Rick you're here. Rick Moranis' saliva. Yeah. I'm drinking a couple of <laughs> So gross. Mm, so chewy. Gross. Mm. Yeah. So, anyway, you're here on a 24-hour visa. No. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have to talk there's, about there's, like, there's like a button you could press and it just yeah. sucks yeah. me back <laughs> your seat Willy, goes flying very up. Willy Wonka yeah, yeah. Um, so did you say I want to come to Hollywood what was it was it a conscious choice or what it was, was the, take it us was, back I'll take you back to a year called 1999 if oh. you remember 99. The take 90s. it away Prince it was the last year of the 90s yeah. uh, good decade mm -hmm. um, and it was a college internship Ended up working for Spumco, which was the original studio that produced Ren and Stimpy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had gone uh, for only eight months, almost a year, and I couldn't have done it without family because as an intern, you kind of don't get paid. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. all experience, but it was those connections, those friends that, uh, that wanted me to come back. I, I went back to Canada, graduated, and then in about 2003, 2004 is when I came back here. And uh, I started working for another studio called uh, Six Point Harness. Mm -hmm. And that's when it was like, okay, I'm here and uh, I'm working as an artist this time, not a, yeah. a production assistant. Mm -hmm. The first show that I worked on uh, that I actually, uh, the first show that I worked on where I met like a heavy hitter was, um, it was a show called Where My Dog's At. Jeff Ross, the roast master general. Jeff Ross, the guy who insults celebrities, yeah. all you yeah, know, yeah. all the, you know, he does all the roasts. He, it was his show. Tracy Morgan was on it, and John DiMaggio was on it. Charlie Adler was voice directing it, and they had oh, a wow. table read at our animation studio. Wow, that's cool. And I remember not knowing even what Mr. Charlie Adler looked like, but I remember hearing his voice. Yes. And he has that very, you know, he commands attention with that yeah. voice. Very, you know, he's a voice director too, but. It, when you watch him direct, he's almost acting as much, if not more, than the voice acting. Yeah. He's got a lot of energy. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember just meeting him going, oh my God, this is Buster Bunny, cow and chicken, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody else you know, that he's done. Yeah. And then John DiMaggio, you know, who I then knew from Futurama, who's yeah. a buddy now. It's kind of crazy to say that. Yeah. He just, he, he, another guy that just bursts into a room and he's just like, ah, ah, ah. sometimes he's not even speaking English. He's yeah. just yeah. yelling at people <laughs> yeah. in his own voice. But yeah. uh, it was, it was kind of like that. It was like a, a weird transition from production to art to, to voiceover. And I was mm -hmm. doing this dance the whole time. Yeah. Was, well, that's so, that's a hot move now. Do you want to do a little hammer? For all hammer? you youngsters out there, this is what you got to do from 1999 all the way up until 2014. You're Weird. so vintage. Yes. Uh, so what kind of kid were you growing up? Oh, well, I'm still a kid, True. pretty much. I don't think I've grown yes. that much. Yeah, you're never going to grow I haven't up. either. <laughs> So I'm, wi I'm with you. I don't know. I'm checking my pant legs to see if I've grown. Are to you see in there? If, what, yeah. are you, what are you looking for? Dude, if I take you, you out shopping, you can ankle. instantly grow two inches because, you I, know, I get you with some rock too. and roll I boots. Cheat. Here's I'm a weird thing cheat. about voiceover folk. We're all kind of tiny people. We are tiny people. Don't don't let the voices fool you. I am five five, but with a six seven Adam's apple. Is what it is. <laughs> I well, check I my legs because um, I check my legs because uh, you know, like when you when you're a kid, you size yourself up against the wall. Yeah, yeah. I do that. I put Sharpie on my calves. I see. Oh, I grew an inch today. <laughs> this is where my ankle was yesterday. And here it is. Uh, when I was a kid, I think I, I I had the most fun, and I think that's what. That's what this career does, is it allows you to have the mm -hmm. most fun. So in a sense, I haven't really grown up. Yeah. Um, I loved cartoons growing up. I played with toys all the time, and I drew, doodled, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Do you think that um, your experience with the production side of things, mm -hmm. do you think that helped you out in, in, in doing voiceover? Uh, yes. I, I'd have to say yes, because... It, you know, it, it's just the overall love of just making something with a fun group yeah. of people. Yeah. Like you guys, you guys don't just do this. You guys are in bands. You guys are also voice actors. I feel like I should be interviewing you guys. You guys are the celebrities. <laughs> Ask here. us a question. Uh, so how long have you guys? I mean, no, seriously. It's, but you know what I mean. Where it's yeah, like yeah, you yeah. just you. There is no question about why you're doing it because mm -hmm. it's just inherent. It's like yeah, it chooses you. Yeah. yeah. You kind of just wake up 
knowing that this is what you want to do. There was a moment where it's like, oh, people were like, you should try doing stand-up because, you know, you're a funny guy and all that stuff. But stand-up is, like, one of the hardest things you could ever try to do because it's, like, technically the same jokes that you have to tell an audience but somehow make it fresh and exciting. There's two guys that I know that are, like, they don't even, it's not even, like, a, a, a hurdle for them. It's yeah. uh, Harlan Williams, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Carlos Alizraki. Oh, he's yes. great, yeah. I've seen them yes. both do back-to-back -back sets in stand-up. Carlos. Oh, yeah, Carlos. Hey, hey Carlos. Hey, Carlos. <laughs> yeah, Carlos. <laughs> oh, my God. But but both of those guys, I could watch, I watched them do back-to-back -back sets, and it was, like, two different sets, mm -hmm. two different audiences, and yeah. they were so good at it. So kudos to the stand-ups out there. Well, that, now, you yeah. have some fun Absolutely. YouTube clips of, of, of oh. Eric doing some, oh. some stamp Laugh so Factory. Sorry. You know, so sorry about you, that. You really, <laughs> it was great, man. It was fun. This is where the viewers go, Pfft. It's no, so funny. No, this is where they open a new window and go, you too, Eric Belza. Um, yeah, unfriend you, I, Eric Belza. You obviously are very connected to the Filipino-Canadian. Yes, that's, that's uh, you this know. is what we look like, in case that's you're wondering. You <laughs> hashtag <laughs> Filipino-Canadian, yeah. question mark? Yeah, oh, question I think it's mark? trending now. Yeah. Yeah. What's um, the difference between a Filipino and a Filipino-Canadian? Um... Uh, we all talk like this with a <laughs> Filipino accent, but in Canada we say A at the end. Ah, That's it. That's okay. yeah. My best friend in high school was Filipino. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. We should have him in. Well, Actually, yeah. is that him back there? He's yeah. out here. Come on, we're still friends. Yeah. yeah. He's here. He's invisible. Yeah. But no, <laughs> not to, imaginary not to discredit yes. any you as as a, as a comedian because you're really funny, yes. man. Stacy was playing me some of your yes. stuff. Oh boy. And I was Thank cracking you. up. Thanks. Well, Absolutely. And that improvisation and being in the moment and working the audience. I mean, all those things. Yeah. I'm, I mean, obviously you do it in the booth and now yes. it goes on stage. I mean, it's all beautiful skill sets that just keep feeding each other. It is It is amazing that, like, uh, how anything gets done when you have six voiceover artists <laughs> in yeah. that yeah. booth because of all that improvisation and because of all of the possibilities you could have with dialogue. Yeah. Yes. Most of the shows that I'm on, they are so open to, like, one one woman in particular, Gray Delisle. She yeah. is like the a hoot and a half. Sometimes I feel like she should get some writer credit because of all the things she comes up with. Yeah. Wow, she's like yeah, one of those great. those women that like I'm like, geez, she's she's hysterical. Yes, yeah, she is. Well, let's talk about some of the shows. Like for example, um, Uncle Grandpa. You guys, you got Kevin Michael Richardson. Yeah, oh my That gosh. you 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 <laughs> record that all Kevin. together. Yes. How do you guys even work? I mean, three because of my favorite words do you in order. Wear Kevin depends Michael because Richardson. Because <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how you could not wet your pants. I where it depends around my waist. Inside Kevin, Kevin wears them around his mouth because of all the, all the things that Kevin says. Yes. It's like it's like a uh, the old Plato yeah, factory. Yeah, yeah. Yes. He comes up with the craziest stuff and uh, one take always. It's like everyone like uh, oh can you piece take two and then part of take mm -hmm. three. Kevin just like all the way through one take. He's always yeah. on. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing. Uh, I, I, another example of a person that I'm uh, blessed to work with. He's one of those guys who, mm -hmm. you know, I look up to, but he's just so welcoming to new folks like me. Yeah. Absolutely, come in and, yeah. And, and I guess he sees a little something in me, so. Yeah. Well, well you got something. Let's talk about just something, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, some of the shows. Okay. Fairly Odd Parents, you got, uh, for Foop, you got a, a nanny nomination for yes, that. Yes, that, uh, that was something else. Uh Butch Hartman, the creator of that show, which has been on television for I don't know how long, maybe ten years mm -hmm. now, yeah. maybe more. Yeah. Uh, he brought me onto that show, and on there you have Suzanne Blakesley, Darren Norris, Carlos, and of course Tara Strong, mm -hmm. the, the main star of that show. Another woman who, uh, uh, a Canadian, another yes, Canadian woman yes. who uh, is very welcoming and very uh, nurturing uh, to someone like myself. They have pretty much all bases covered on that show with voices. There's so many multi-talented, uh, multi-faceted people on that show. It's like when I was brought on, I was kind of like shocked because this has been going on for a while, this show. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was a little uh, unheard of. So it's kind of intimidating. It's yeah. like putting your hand in a in a comedy <laughs> blender. It's like it's been going on for you yeah, know, yeah. five plus seasons already yeah. at that point. And just recently, they, they've been doing these live-action animation movies, mm -hmm. and I was in one of them as the villain. Foop, the evil fairy baby. <laughs> and that was apparently that summer, right? <laughs> yes, that's yeah. the one. Yeah. And um, again, thankful for that opportunity. Uh, and, and 
there are fans of that character, apparently. So. Yeah. Oh, there are rabid fans of that oh, character. Yeah. I don't mean they have rabies. Strange. They're just they are, rabid. Yeah. Okay, They're obviously little... then we have Uncle Grandpa, your belly bag. Yes. Yeah, the talking fanny pack. <laughs> oh, actually, it's so cute. It's so weird because he's, he actually spawned a phone cover. I oh, didn't... that's awesome, oh, yeah. dude. Cute. It's a little, a little weird. Um, that. That's so cool. I usually p play characters that don't have eyes or are inanimate weirdos <laughs> like this guy. But yeah, it's it's one of those things where when I, I was um, still working in animation, I remember someone like a chat window. That's what happens when you work in animation, like yeah. eight to ten hour days with your with your colleagues in in the bullpen just drawing, and you, a chat window will pop up, mm -hmm. and it's usually some stupid video of like a monkey farting or something. <laughs> and one day this video pops up, and it was the pilot for Uncle Grandpa. Uh, created by Pete Browngard, and I was like, oh my gosh, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> like, I clicked on it, and I was just blown away. I was like, yeah. this, whoever's making this knows what he's doing, you know, and I really would love to work with him one day at some yeah. capacity. Yeah, he is a wildly creative individual. Super cool yeah. guy, too. Super chill. And um, he had one series, Secret Mountain Fort, that went on and kind of came and went, and then um, they decided to make Uncle Grandpa a series, so... It's like, oh my God, please, please, Lord. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. just go out anything on that show. It didn't yeah. matter who. Yeah. And um, I ended up getting a belly bag, and um, Kevin ends up getting uh, mm. Mr. Gus. Yes. And um, and I was like, this is a dream come true, because it's like two two amazing, amazingly creative people, and uh, one of those things that I'm so thankful for. Mm -hmm. like, That's so cool. Oh yeah. my gosh, yes. The Looney Tunes show, classic yes. Marvin the Martian. <laughs> oh man. That is like... How I did think, that happen? Well, there there were uh, a couple different things that were happening at that time. Um, I was actually buddies with uh, the 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 girl that was the designer. The She redesigned the Looney Tunes. And uh, another amazingly talented uh, woman, Jessica Barutsky. Mm -hmm. I met her at Spumco when I was working in Ottawa. And uh, I always knew that she was going to be destined for great things. And... The honor of being able to say, oh, yeah, I, uh, I had a hand in redesigning these iconic characters like Bugs, Daffy, mm -hmm. Porky, Tw all of them. She did such a good job, uh, and I believe that show uh, was, a, was a pretty good, well-received hit. It's yeah. hard to say you're going to be the person that is, I'm going to rethink these characters that we already know yeah. and love for so many different reasons. Right, yeah. And, you know... It's it's a the job of a big studio like that to keep those characters relevant. Mm -hmm. So yep. I feel like they were able to do that with uh, with that show, taking it, uh, making it for an audience today, but still giving uh, fans like yes. us like, yeah. something to look at and go, okay, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they kept the integrity mm -hmm. of yeah. yeah, yeah. It it was almost like uh, it's almost like The Simpsons now, where it's like Simpsons has been on for how many years? Like over twenty five years. years. Yeah. Right? They're doing like a full. Fox FX, they're going to mm -hmm. show all the Simpsons in, 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 in a row, and it's going to take 12 days or something. Mm. If you watch the show now, it's almost like they are so a little self-aware of their their success and the characters that they like write for. So I almost feel like they there was a hint of that in Looney Tunes show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was able to um, audition for it, and um, and I got to work with some of like the top guys. And this says a lot about someone like Mel Blanc. I walked into a room one day and you met Mel Blanc? Oh no, <laughs> I had a, a time machine. <laughs> you I had you a, got into a time machine and I, met Mel. That's yeah. why you have success today. I have My goodness. this thing they call it a flux capacitor. <laughs> and I, I have no I'm car though. You now. I just, just a flux yeah, capacitor. Yeah, I glue it to my back and I run really <laughs> fast down the 405. And then what happens? Yeah, and then I <laughs> <laughs> then my pants fall down and everyone goes, "What the hell's wrong with that?" And then you're oh, in a different pants. place. Oh, like boy. prison. Oh, uh, yeah. And then I forget to take my pills. But anyway, back to you, Eric. <laughs> yes. Uh, I w it was a day uh, I had found out that I was doing Marvin the Martian's voice. Oh, isn't that lovely? I Which love is him. one of my favorite male voices. Ooh. And, um, and I walk into a room, and it's uh, in order. It's like Maurice LaMarche, uh, Jeff Bennett, Bob Bergen. Bob, Bob, <laughs> Jeff Bergman, Bob Bergen, mm. Jeff Bennett, all the, all the, all the all combinations. The yeah. Yeah. Was June Foray there? I, on a different occasion, yes, oh, okay. she was there. Billy okay. West. Oh my gosh. And, uh, Jim Cummings, I believe. <laughs> yeah. And that's like, uh, half of IMDb right there. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. But 
they were all there doing Mel Blanc voices. So, and myself included. Mm-hmm. So it's like one of those things where it like literally took almost 10, 10 dudes to fill in the shoes of one guy. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's saying a lot, you know? Yeah. Um, but what a what a room i was like i felt like a like robin in a room full of batman that day you know did you, yeah. what what was do you remember what you were thinking don't wet your pants mm. try not to soil yourself yes. if you do just yes. blame it on whoever's sitting next and to you blame it on the intern <laughs> eric yeah. has a sponsorship with serenity guards yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> well after you changed your pants you yes. went on to do turbo fest you've got chet and breadwinners Badoos, who is oh, yeah. just adorable we'll, we'll talk a bit about turbo first yes. it's, uh, it's my paul giamatti voice match Very Love good. Tur- now, the key to a good paul giamatti is just to try to try to bite your own shoulders when you're talking <laughs> Yeah. And get very na- very nasal and oh my, you know and he gets he gets he gets up there and he gets really low. When I was watching interviews of him on on YouTube in my research, he's very you know in his movies he plays very boisterous, yes. but yeah, as a person, Mr. Paul Giamatti is very mm-hmm. very even keel, but very he's so like there's like a a, a a twist of like dark in there that is yeah. just the right amount, mm-hmm. and uh, you know. I'm very self-deprecating, and and I love that kind of humor. And he's always like, I don't understand why I play these characters, you know, like these very like bald, short, fat, bald guys. And I'm like, I can relate. I all if you look at a lineup of all my characters, yeah. they're all like squat little like yeah. like Bedus. He's like this little oh ball of energy. He's like, like a little bun because Bedus eats bread. He likes to eat bread. Yeah, he's, he's, he's like a little gluten, roll. He's gluten a little full. Not yeah. gluten free. <laughs> full. He's gluten full. Full price gluten. That guy likes his I gluten. Love it. They picked the right guy to play the gluten character. I don't know. I posed for all the model shoots. Yeah, for yeah. Oh, nice. So turn I three quarter it, back. Yeah, the Pillsbury Doughboy is being <laughs> right. Uh, obscure. And then of course, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There's Tiger Claw, yes. which is a Man, fan dude, page. Man, you're freaking all I'm over. Just the chucking place. up all the Asian. Tiger Claw, yes. <laughs> Very deep. This is him. That's good, dude. Yes. Him and Kevin together are like, uh, Ke- Kevin plays Shredder. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like a base overload, my it's, gosh. It's like my dad times two. Yeah. You have to do your homework if you want to play outside with your friends. Yes. That's what Tiger Claw sounds yeah. like. Wow. So <laughs> That's a good, good voice, man. So good. So good. But uh, I have to thank... Um, Ciro Neely and Brandon for getting me on that show. They are two of like the most talented guys I know working today. They're uh, the director and executive producer, head writer for that show. Mm-hmm. And clearly, again, speaking from a fan's point of view, I loved that show growing up as a kid. Again, another Rob Paulson uh, vehicle in there. But um, clearly they are two people that care so much about the show. And the success of the show is evidence of that mm-hmm. yeah they they are doing it their way but in a way that is not so far from the original series yeah. and what is it the 30th anniversary yeah i think so uh, i think this summer yep. of it's amazing it's, it's a lot amazing. of pizza eating yeah. on that show you know yeah. it. <laughs> yeah again with the gluten again with the gluten yeah <laughs> boy we just love yeah, we, gluten. we love gluten we're a fan of gluten um so are there any other current projects because you're not busy clearly i'm not anything else you want to talk <laughs> about or that you can talk about well today i'm being interviewed on uh, vo buzz weekly so yeah. nice that's, that's that's a plug within the show dear yeah, diary okay. today this is a rite of passage i hope you guys know oh. this this is like uh my baptism Oh. Well, They're good. gonna dunk me back there. Well, it's, it's funny well because all deserved. the people that you've been talking about have sat right there where you're yes. at right now. Uh, I, and, I recognize these stripes. And, did Kevin and, fart? Did he? He probably <laughs> did. He did it's all from kinds his of vapor, stuff. His vapor cigarette. Oh, oh gosh. Yes. He did. yes. He loves that thing. He does. He does. It. It's, it's a like toy. A, he's like he, a choo-choo train. And he brought know? it with yeah. him that day. What did we yeah. say? It's, it was. I, it was. I said we it was were like talking, Maui. and he's blowing like smoke like he goes <laughs> fog. I'm your fog machine. Yeah, it was hysterical. Um, it's like London in here. He's crazy. You can see that in our archives. Um, uh, Bravest Warriors. Uh, they they keep bringing me back. Mm-hmm. I play the concierge. He's another little guy. A little guy with a big voice. Yeah, a little guy yeah. with a big voice. He's Do you a think, what about, um, was it uh, Dr. Zinn on Scooby-Doo? <laughs> oh my god. He is awesome. It's pretty much my natural speaking voice. Yes, that's right. Almost the same voice I use on Black Dynamite for Dr. <laughs> Wu. Why are Asians so evil in doctors? I don't know. <laughs> But I'm using this voice. I uh, 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 take it from from James Hong. (laughs) James Hong is my real grandfather. Uh, He once told me that uh, that I uh, we have to do business together. You and I. I heard you're an artist too. You will email me, right? That's what he said. 
That's what he actually he, said? He accused me. He's like, you better email me. I don't know if you haven't or not. So vicious. Oh. And he was stacking breakfast burritos oh at gosh. Nickelodeon. He takes like six when he leaves. Wow. And he goes, yeah. one for you, two one for me. me. <laughs> one for you, three for me. It's a great character. Thanks. I want to see him. And, and, a, and a classic. Another, um, it was Dr. Quest, I also played in that, uh, in the, that Scooby-Doo episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I stood next to um, uh, George Takei for four hours. Everyone was sitting. Old George was standing up like a trooper, and he was just, oh, yes, I was the bad guy. And he was, you know, classic George. And at break, he goes, Mr. Bowser, you are I and oral candy, is what he said to me. <laughs> he hit on me. Sulu. So, and you felt good about that, oh. right? Well, I was washing my hands. We were in the restroom together. I was like, how did you get in here? I locked the door. I'm everywhere. He used his little... Yeah, yeah, here's yeah. his little uh, you know, you communicator. Are. Oh, oh my gosh, not. well, oh, that's God. a moment. Yeah. That's a moment. It's going to live forever now because mm. of you yes. guys. Thank you. Okay, do you remember a yes. moment or the moment when you went from auditioning a lot to working? Oh, okay, That that is the transition. I was working at Six Point Harness, and that's the studio that was, uh, I think, like the, the window of opportunity because they allowed me to still be an artist Mm -hmm. as my day job and allowed me to leave my desk and go out and audition. And I don't think any other studio would do that (laughs) in their Mm -hmm. right mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, So I really do have so much um, gratitude for them for that. Uh, As long as my scenes were in the the file folder. Right, right. Yeah. But that was like, that was it. I remember um, Jessica DeChico. Do you guys know Jessica? Mm -mm. You guys got to get her on the show. She's another... uh, inspiration to me. Uh, she's Flame Princess on Adventure Time oh, and, yeah, yeah. and tons of other things. Okay. But I remember talking to her on the phone one day. She calls me and she's like, hey, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm at my desk working. She's like, oh, I'm at the park uh, having a picnic with my dog. <laughs> and I was like, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> yeah. I, I hung up my cell phone, even though you don't need to do that. Yeah. But it's dramatic. It's, that's, that was the freedom she had as mm-hmm. being a voiceover artist. Yeah. She used to work for like, you know, nine to one or two to six and then have the day to to relax and and be creative and um, I remember that was the time where I was like I have to do that I want to have a picnic with a dog too one day <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it slowly started to turn from like just half and half between art and voiceover to voiceover I- I completely mm-hmm. uh, one of the first American animated series that I booked here through Nickelodeon was El Tigre and that is where I did my yeah. Ricardo Montalban impression. Yeah. Ah, yes. Mommy, That's good. I have to uh, tell you to take these uh, guest bags to that room. You know, it's like now that kind of... Now you can do your Hervé Villachez. Yes. Yeah. Bath, bath, be plain! That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Are you sure he's not well, I learned it from him, actually. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you meet him? Uh, well, yeah, I did meet yeah. him, but there's a story that goes with yeah. that. We, that's another show. That's, oh. that's, a, whole, <laughs> that's a, whole a whole other show. Whole Never pick show. him up. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> I want to know that story. <laughs> um, so how long was that transition before you were like, audi- you know, working at a place? I mean, you, you oh, no man. longer have a job like that, right? No. Now you go to the park with your dog, right? Yes, I do. Okay. Well, someone else. So, yeah. how long? How long was that process for you before, the, from the time that you were working and doing voiceover, and then full time voiceover? Oh, boy, I'd, I'd have to say like anywhere between two to four years. That okay. whole transition, like a real solid transition. Whew, long time there, well, guys. I, I don't mean, know if you want to stick it out. I mean, that's the thing. It's like you kind of that's that's the true test. Yeah. I, I could say two to four, but really from 1999. I was gonna say you've been here. Now, yeah. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's. And the thing is, I never went to school for this. I never, I never studied acting like a lot of the the heavy hitters had, and I feel like it's just one of those things where I was like, I really just want to do it. Yeah. Um, Billy West, one of my like biggest inspirations. He came from radio, you yep. know, mm-hmm. and that's like another place where it's like, it, it kind of like it trains you, but you really just if you're gonna do it, you're just gonna yeah. do it. Yeah. No one's gonna tell yeah. you no. Uh, you just have to seize it. And, yeah. Um, it was one of those moments for me where I actually ended up quitting my job in animation, not having any leads. Uh, me, like an idiot, was like, oh, yeah, I'll just be on El Tigre. It'll be on TV forever. <laughs> yeah. And it, get, it got canned, you know. And um, 
Jorge and Sandra, who are the creators of that show, they have a feature film in the works now with Guillermo del Toro. And years later, even though that show was very short-lived, they'll still remember to, they brought mm. me on to do mm. voices in that feature film. Mm. And it's wow. Like, yeah. So cool, you know, like yeah. they don't have to. They don't, yeah, absolutely. They don't owe this dirty Canadian anything. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> dirty but Canadian. do you feel like when you, I mean, bec having been on the art side, mm -hmm. uh, when you get an audition and you see a breakdown of characters, yeah. I mean, do you feel, it seems like there's a, you've got some kind of a sixth sense or some, a little inside sort of he, sensibility back, because a lot of times you get that character and you go, oh, okay. Yeah. But how do you approach it? A little bit. There is definitely, there's the, the breakdown of a character now for any young voiceover artist out there, any aspiring actor. They'll, they'll give you a description of what the character is like. The personality, good guy, bad guy, king, prince, princess, wizard, you know, whatever. Age, uh, where they live, even the drawings, you can see the physicality, mm -hmm. that will help. But it's it really is that sometimes it's like a big guessing game. Even the people that are sending out auditions might not know until you walk in and right. you're like that X factor that kind of brings that to the table. And I think being on that side of, of, of the pencil, you know, mm -hmm. to, so, so to speak, I'm able to kind of like be open with the directors or the creators or writers in uh, for that matter to kind of explore like what do you really want you know let's not just I, I kind of approach auditions differently uh, maybe I shouldn't be that forward or open but I feel like it's more of a comfort thing because sometimes I think a lot of people who are asking for something might be shy or they don't want to give you a line read or, or mm -hmm. they have this this one thing like they got the creative blinders on and maybe they just have had this idea for years and years and years, and then finally here's somebody that's gonna bring it to life. Mm -hmm. I'm very open to like, not just one possibility for a voice, but like many, because that will change down yeah. the road. Right. Um, you know, prime example is the voice of Homer Simpson. Didn't sound the way it does now as it did 30 years ago. Right. So it evolves. And I think that's the one thing you have to keep in mind is that it's, the audition is, is the introduction, but I think it's where the character you have to have future vision. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Become a mutant. That's true. Uh, become a mutant. Become a mutant, and <laughs> you'll book all the roles. Yeah. You could just kind no, of but I mean, characters age, they grow, they have different arcs, and so yeah. you have to sh show that that you have yeah. that range to, and the possibility and the openness and the willingness to mm -hmm. play. Yeah. yeah. Now, and that's that's really really cool. So, so if you're if you're at home, mm -hmm. you audition from home, or do you go to your agent? Yes. Okay, you get at home, you get an audition for some, an animation character for a new show. Uh -huh. When you're looking at that audition, mm -hmm. okay, do you overthink it? Do you read it a bunch of times? Do you meditate <laughs> you know, before you say, okay, I'm gonna go with this, or do you just go for it? I think you just kinda have to go for it, and, and definitely when you go for it, go for it within that range that you know you're comfortable with, mm -hmm. because a lot of the times, I think like a lot of people just go, oh, I gotta, I gotta go extreme with this. And it's like, well, good luck, you booked it, but now you gotta do that voice for four hours, mm -hmm. and can you do that voice yeah. Yeah. for that? Can you sustain? Right. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you know that has a lot to do with it, too. But I'll usually go in and, and have some kind of idea, and um, maybe I'll have a second take at it, but usually yeah. they'll send me stuff, too, that is very specific to right. what they know I can do. Right. Right. So there's like a, a lot of different factors that go in. That's cool, man. Yeah. Well, that concludes part one with one of the coolest dudes on the planet, Eric Bauza. We'll be back next week with part two. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest at Bio Buzz Weekly. Thanks for watching. We love you guys. And just remember, you, you always, always have time, time for a little, little buzz. buzz.